Hello and welcome to Still Behind the Bench. My name is Adam and on this channel I will attempt to describe the science behind distilling spirits in a more technical way. Hopefully it'll whet your appetite to learn more and teach you enough so that you're more self-sufficient. So for this video I'm going to talk about why it's recommended to have some copper in your still. This video is going to be focused on a study done in 2011 by researchers at the Scotch Whiskey Research Institute in Edinburgh, Scotland. The name of the study is The Impact of Copper in Different Parts of Malt Whiskey Pot Stills on New Make Spirit Composition and Aroma. Essentially, it's all about how does copper affect the sulfur compounds in your distillate. I'll put a link in the description of this study. Let's get started. Okay, so you all may have heard someone state that you should have copper in your still to remove sulfur compounds. You may have also heard that it's not actually necessary. That's why I decided to make this video with a credible study to show why you should in fact have copper in your still. So let's get into this. The first thing you should know about the sulfur compounds that are in the wash is that they are detectable by humans at exceedingly low values. DMTS, uh, dimethyl trisulfide, which is the sulfur compound that is the main focus of this study, is detectable has a detectable threshold, so the average human can detect this compound at only 33 parts per trillion in a 20% ethanol solution. 33 parts per trillion is only 33 nanograms per liter. That is a very, very small amount. Grams, milligrams, micrograms, and then nanograms. They also did test other sulfur compounds. Uh, DMTS isn't the only one. They also checked for dimethyl sulfide, dimethyl disulfide, methyl 2, methyl 3, furyl disulfide, thionaphthene, thiophene, S-methyl thioacetate, and diethyl disulfide. What they found is between an all copper steel setup versus an all stainless steel setup is that the copper steel new make spirit, and new make is the distillate that comes out of your spirit run, they found that it was characterized as a cereal, fainty, pungent, and clean aroma. But when they used the uh, all stainless steel setup, they, it was described as less clean, and that less cleanliness was attributed to more sulfury and meaty aromas, specifically DMTS. So how did they do these tests? They had four three-piece stills made up. Each still was made of three pieces, a kettle or a boiler, a, a line arm, and then a condenser. So here's a photos of the, the copper still, the wash still, and then the spirit still. They initially ran two control experiments. So all stainless steel wash still, all stainless steel spirit still, and then they did an all copper wash still and an all copper spirit still. They then took that distillate over to their professional sensory panel at the Scotch Research Institute and they also tabulated all the data and they came up with this. So this is just for a full copper still versus a full stainless steel still. You can see here that generally speaking for at least three of the five compounds they show in this list or in this chart that there's no real difference. The S-methyl thioacetate, DMDS and the MMFDS, there's really no difference between the two. The difference comes with the dimethyl sulfide, which you can see that the copper actually makes more of. And at the beginning of the study, they show that, or they, they refer to other experiments that have been done that show that copper salts can increase the concentration of DMTS. And I imagine it also increases the concentration of DMS, which is why in a copper still, there is more DMS than there would be in a stainless steel still, because there'll be copper salts being formed in the kettle, which will react to create more DMS. There would also be more DMTS being produced. However, DMTS is more easily reduced by reacting with metallic copper. And that's why in this part of the chart, you can see that the DMTS level in the copper still is almost at zero, whereas the stainless steel, which won't react with any of the DMTS, is really high. All right, so for the other tests, what they did was they had their two still set up, and for the first experiment, they would take the stainless steel wash still boiler, and they would swap it out with a copper one. So everything else is stainless steel, except for the boiler. Then they'd run their tests three times. And what they'd do is they'd put the stainless steel boiler back in, and then they would replace the 
wash stills line arm with a copper line arm and they'd do three tests and they'd repeat that replace singularly replacing each part of the wash still and then the spirit still so they take their distillate and they give it to the scotch research institute's sensory panel and these are the values that they got back so with the copper still you can see the sulfury amidi values are really low so this is all copper this is all stainless steel you can see the values are very high the next interesting thing is if the only difference between the stainless steel still and the copper modified still is just that the spirit still condenser is made from copper then the values you're going to get or the amount of sulfury and meaty aromas you're going to get is going to be pretty similar to an all stainless steel still so in my past videos you can see my still has a copper condenser and if that was the only copper that was in my still i could end up with distillate very much like this sulfury meaty uh, aroma distillate next up i have the the actual compound levels for dmts again you can see with no copper the dmts levels are pretty high this would be between 17 and 18 parts per billion and we know that it's measurable at 33 parts per trillion so this is a very high amount so s1 is going to be the wash still pot s2 is going to be the wash still line arm s3 is the wash still condenser and then the spirit still pot is s4 spirit still line arm is s5 and then spirit still condenser is s6 so you can see that the greatest changes are when you make the wash still line arm the wash still condenser or the spirit still uh, boiler copper they're all pretty significant changes not as good as having an all copper setup but if you're going to have a still that is only part copper making it these three parts is going to have the biggest impact now if we go over and look at the all copper still we can see that aroma wise there isn't a massive difference when you swap out one of these copper parts for stainless steel and they're all pretty much close to an all copper still as well but when we actually look at the compound levels you can see the values are very low especially compared to the stainless steel still as you can see swapping out any part any part here with just stainless steel you can see that generally all the other copper parts are going to make up for it and there's no real massive impact being made the conclusion for their study is that copper was best able to reduce sulfur compound concentrations when the wash still condenser or the spirit still boiler was made of copper and they also found that there were some unknown compounds unknown 10 they called it unknown 1025 and unknown 1504 if you've never used a chromatography machine before this might not you may not understand what this means when you first see it i'll give a little quick explanation when you run a gas chromatography analysis or a uh, high pressure liquid chromatography analysis or an ion chromatography analysis the output you get is a chart that will have all these peaks like this each one is typically a different compound but the axis is time usually in minutes so when it's saying unknown 10.25 that means 10.25 minutes and unknown 1504 is 15.04 minutes and that's generally just how long this compound took to travel through the chromatography column inside this machine but they found or i should say they didn't know what these compounds were and they go on to say that more research needs to be done to figure out what they are because especially with this 15.04 seems to have a significant impact on aroma from the spirits they were testing so how does this all apply to us hobbyists well if you don't have copper in your still there is a high probability that you could end up with a final product that has a sulfury or meaty flavor to it if that happens you're going to need to start introducing copper into your still at some point if you're like me and you want to build a stainless steel still for ease of cleaning then you need to find ways to introduce copper into both the liquid in the boiler and into the vapor path itself so what i did was i took a piece of uh, copper pipe i think it was just three quarter inch diameter and it was uh, i think it was 24 inches long which would be about 600 millimeters i cut it up into half inch or 12 millimeter pieces and then i just crushed it in the middle with some needle nose pliers and then i dumped that into the boiler and then then just above the boiler in the column I'll put in some copper mesh or more pieces of that copper pipe or I will run copper bubble plates then I also have the copper condenser which I bought for its knockdown power 
uh, because copper is roughly 24 times better than stainless steel at removing heat. I didn't buy it for the purposes of removing sulfur compounds. It didn't even occur to me to do it for that when I bought it. But yeah, um, I think you'll find that if you don't have a copper still and you're making a whiskey, and after watching this video, you decide to add in copper, I think you'll find that your spirit tastes better, smells better, and you'll, you'll understand why, or you'll have a better understanding of why stills, even today, are made out of copper. And that's it for this video on uh, why you should put copper in your still. I hope you enjoyed it. Please click like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And have a great week.